Good morning, my name is Ryan Hatfield and I would like to share with you an honours research project that I will be conducting with my supervisors Kirtjan Pepping and Dan Chalkley. The purpose of this project is to advance the theoretical understanding and application of talent transfer in sport. We will particularly be addressing the talent transfer process through a skill acquisition lens. Firstly, what is talent transfer and is it even worth studying? Talent transfer is often talked about as the recycling of talent that occurs when an athlete transitions between sports. A study by McNamara and Collins found that approximately 5-7% to of Summer Olympic athletes and 9-27% to of Winter Olympic athletes are in the Olympic team as a result of talent transfer. Although talent transfer is related to sports sampling and late specialisation, it is not the same. The distinct difference is that the athlete already demonstrates talent, typically by specialising in a sport and competing at a high level before the transfer. Transfer is a well-defined term within motor learning and is defined as the influence of previous experience on the learning of a new skill or the performing of a skill in a new context. So why am I conducting this honours project? Outside of the honours program, I am contracted to the Winter Olympic Institute of Australia, working with the aerial skiing program. This program is partnered with the Victorian Institute of Sport and is the best women's program in the world. The program is a talent transfer program and a large part of our job is to optimise the pathway and skill development of gymnasts who are transferring to aerial skiing. The aerial skiing program is supporting this honours project and has agreed to participate in the research process, allowing for an excellent balance of theory and application. In this case, the aerial skiing program recruits acrobatically skilled athletes, predominantly ex-gymnasts, and they go through a thorough talent identification process and a needs analysis to evaluate their individual success trajectory. Upon entering the program, the athletes must learn to ski, which follows the common motor learning model from novice to expert, and importantly, the athletes must learn to modify their acrobatic technique. The program has good sports scientists and great research support. And when we look at the talent transfer research, we find large volumes of research in athlete pathways and the prevalence of talent transfer. Questions are raised about sport sampling and fundamental movement patterns and how they impact success in sport. And the talent identification process is pretty well studied. When we get to skill transfer, there's a plethora of research, much of which is conflicting, but tied into the concept of skill transfer is technique change. In a meeting with the CEO of the Olympic Winter Institute and the program manager of the aerial skiing program, they said, what we really want to know is what is the best way to transfer the skills of a gymnast to those of an aerial skier. There's a gap in the professional knowledge and a gap in the research for how to transfer a skill when technique must also change. The gymnast has learned to flip and twist one way and has performed thousands and thousands of repetitions over years of training. Then all of a sudden they change sports, they need to keep flipping and keep twisting, but they have to please a different judging criteria and they have to perform with skis on. Now this is the problem that we aim to solve. Fundamentally, this raises two research questions. The first, how can we measure and assess technique change? We're not going to know the success of an intervention unless we first know what we are measuring and how to measure it. Secondly, we want to know what are the optimal training strategies, models and practice designs to elicit technique change in a well-learned sporting skill. Furthermore, we probably want to know a little bit about how the technique change performs under pressure and how to prevent old habits from returning. So, what are the optimal training strategies, models and practice designs to elicit technique change? Preliminary investigations finds that there is a dearth of research in technique change in general. But there is some, and it's scattered across several sporting skills and across several disciplines of research. This scattered information lends itself well to a systematic review. We know that sports people spend years developing and consolidating their skills, and we know that skill consolidation isn't always final. Technique change happens when a new coach comes in and has new preferences, 
or when an athlete addresses bad habits, or when the competition changes, like when high jumpers had to adopt the Frosby flop technique. What we don't know is how athletes have trained to elicit technique change and how effective different strategies are. The aim of the systematic review is to learn about the effectiveness of these strategies, particularly when we are concerned about highly developed or consolidated sporting skills. This line of research is highly relevant to the aerial skiing program, as gymnasts learn to flip and twist like an aerial skier. But I hope this research can be useful beyond a single application. Talent transfer rarely involves a skill transfer that adopts identical technique across sports. Even something as simple as a sprinter transferring to team sport often finds that they have to learn to run with shorter stride lengths and higher stride frequency so they can be more reactive to play, accelerating, decelerating and changing direction faster. It's also possible that these learnings can be applied outside of sport, such as an amputee learning to walk with a prosthetic or a traveller learning to drive on the opposite side of the road. Of course, to make this research relevant to aerial skiing, we need to be able to measure the technique that we propose to change. Twist within a somersault has been extensively studied by Fred Yeadon and colleagues. Yeadon used a custom-made computer simulation that attempted to recreate the athlete movements. These methods taught us a lot about how athletes move, but they are impractical for frequent use because they're very time consuming and they require significant expertise. Yeadon's findings tell us that a gymnast typically creates twist within a somersault by rotating their chest and bending their torso. An aerial skier, on the other hand, typically twists with a more rigid body and uses asymmetrical arm movements to create the twist. This is most clearly demonstrated by the third image from the left in each image set, where the shoulders and hips are coupled in the aerial skiing technique at the bottom, and the shoulders are almost a quarter twist and an eighth of a somersault ahead in the gymnastics twisting technique at the top. So effectively, what we're looking for is a simple way to measure the coupling of the upper and lower body during a twisting somersault. That is where the inertial measurement unit or IMU comes in. IMUs are a relatively cheap sensor that can be used to record angular kinematic data. Demonstrated in this graph produced by Dr. Cherie Walker, who placed an IMU on the hips of a diver performing a dive with one and a half twists and two and a half somersaults. We hope to extend the methods developed by Dr. Walker by placing an IMU at both the hips and the shoulders of several gymnasts and aerial skiers who are completing trials of a full twisting backward somersault. This skill is regularly trained in both sports. According to the information gained by Yeadon and the expertise of practitioners in the field, we hypothesize that the angular kinematic profile of the shoulders and the hips will be relatively coupled for aerial skiers and somewhat decoupled for gymnasts, indicating that IMUs can in fact be used to measure technique change as a gymnast trains to twist like an aerial skier. So why? To simplify everything, we know that talent transfer programs exist and that they can be very successful. We know that the training process often involves technique change, which is under-researched. There is a need for greater scientific understanding of technique change, and a systematic review can collate and synthesize all the available knowledge on this topic. The outcome of the systematic review might provide a foundation for training interventions and we know the aerial skiing program want to use this knowledge to optimise their own training process. But first, they need a practical way to assess technique of twisting somersaults. I propose that we will conduct a systematic review and we will initiate a validation study to assess whether IMUs can measure the technique of twisting somersaults. This lays the groundwork for future experimental research by discussing optimal training methods and a way to directly measure their effectiveness. A tool like this can enable the aerial skiing program and other acrobatic sports to directly measure technique variability, consistency, and technique change over time, which has implications for theories around motor learning, performance, transfer, and biomechanics. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email.